Click on the Ricoh Design software on your computer. Click on Advanced Designer and a window is going to open up that will allow you to choose the garment type and the garment thickness that you're going to be using. We have t-shirt, sweatshirt, tote bag, and other. You'll also notice that there are different thicknesses, thin, normal, and thick. We're going to choose tote bag, and I'm printing on a canvas tote bag, so I'm going to use thick. It's important that you choose the correct garment type and the thickness. This is going to tell the printer the amount of ink to use when it's doing the printing. Under size, we have two options, A4 and A5. A4 is the platen that comes with the printer. And what a platen is, is it's sort of like that template. So if you look at the tray, you see that black surface on, in the tray, the large surface, that's called a platen. And the A4 comes with the printer. The A5 is a smaller platen that you can purchase from any Juki dealer, and this one will allow you to do socks if you wanted to print socks, if you wanted to print the sleeves of a t-shirt, or any small project. So it's a smaller type template that fits into that tray for you to put your, your items on. So for the tote bag, we're going to choose the A4, the one that came with the printer, and we can choose portrait or landscape, and since it's a tote bag, I want to go with the landscape, and click OK. This brings us into the edit screen of the software. Now I can go over here and find the file that I want to use. If I click on camera, it's going to allow me to use the webcam of the computer to take a picture with. And if I click on import image, it's going to allow me to import an image that I have saved on my computer. I have saved it maybe on an SD card from a camera or on a USB memory stick. I also have the option to import from a smartphone or any smart device or tablet using a USB cord. And then I can also import wirelessly. So let's go over to the first one and choose computer because that's how I want to bring in a graphic that I've saved on my computer. So it's telling me to insert my USB stick or my SD card if that's where I want to get the graphics from. We can select any JPEG file or PNG file. These are the graphic files that the software will read. We can import files up to 20 megs or less, and we can bring in a maximum of 20 files into one printing. And that means that I can bring in 20 different graphics. If I had say a separate photo of 15 different people and I wanted to bring them in all individually, I can do that. And you can bring in up to 20 files to print at one time. So let's select our image and it will take you to your pictures folder or you can go to wherever you have selected or saved a graphic. We're, I'm going to choose the graphic that I got off of the internet. So I on my desktop created a folder for the design software and I have saved this into that folder. So I'm going to open that up. You could have chosen anything from your pictures file. You could have um, gone anywhere on your desktop or in your documents folder to find the graphics that you wanted to use. So I want to use this and print my own fabric for quilting with. So I'm bringing in the graphic. I'm resizing it. And I could have just printed it from the large picture. But I want to make these items a little smaller when they print. So I've resized this down. I'm going to go back to import image again. Go back to the computer. Select the image. It's going to come back to the last place I was. Select that image, open it, resize it again. It's very easy to just click and drag and resize. Move this over and just line those up. Now I'm going to go back to import image and get that image again. Do the same thing, resize it, and move it. And I'm going to do this one more time. I'm 
resize it and position it. And I have now created a piece of fabric that when I print this, I can use this in my quilting. I can print my own quilting fabric. If you want to, there is actually a quilt that has been done using this, and we have that on our website, jukiquilting.com. There will be a link there that you can click on for Rico Printing Inspiration, and it will show you a picture of the quilt that has been made using this, this fabric. So if I were ready to print, I could print, but I also have some other options. If I click on the image, I can go do auto adjustment and what that is is we'll talk about this a little bit later as we go work with a photo instead of a graphic that I got off of the internet but if I wanted this darker if I click contrast you can see how much darker it gets and I can click on each one of these and change the contrast we also have an undo if you accidentally move something and I can change the contrast and now that's ready to print. So if you're importing an image from your computer, that's all you have to do. And now I'm going to go import an actual photo of a, um, a photo that has been taken. So I can undo this. You'll notice that as I click undo, it's undoing. We have unlimited or I could click and delete. Or if I go back up here and click top, it will take me back to the beginning of the software. Just to undo so you can see how that works. So now I want to go get an image back on my computer. This is a photo that I have saved. Or I could go get an image from my phone. So for this time, let's actually get an image from my phone. I actually have my phone hooked up to a USB cable and the USB cable is connected to the computer. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to click start importing and it's going to import all of the images that are on my phone. So I can go choose a photo that I want to work with. And for this one, I think the image I want is a couple of pages down. Oh, there it is. Let me go back to page number two, and I'm going to choose this image and open it up. So this is a photo I took. Yes, this is my sewing buddy. This is Montana, and he sits there while I sew, so I have an image of that that I want to put on a tote bag. So it brings the image in, and now I can go over here and edit this. If you click on Auto Adjust, it will automatically adjust that in the software. You see how it lightened it up. If you don't like that, just click off of it again and it brings your photo back in in its original. But I kind of like what happens, so I'm going to leave auto adjust on, made it a little lighter. And we have blur edges. Now this is a photo, so you'll see those sharp lines. If I click blur edges, blur edges you see what happened, how it softened that a little bit? And that may be an option that you want. For this, I'm going to click off of that, and I'm going to make my photo the, size, the largest size. Now, when you're bringing photos in and you resize, they're going to resize proportionally. Later, when we work with graphics, with just some graphic pictures, you can resize those unproportionally. So now I have brightness, contrast, I could rotate this. If I wanted a different rotation, it will rotate in 45 degree increments. I have trim, which is like cropping. So I'm going to click on trim. And now I can drag any of these edges and crop this picture the way I want it. When you get it the way you want it, just click on crop and you see it's made the adjustments. Click OK, and it's going to take it back into the editing of the software, and now you can enlarge it or go back and do the uh, blur edges or any of the other editing features. 
Now I still have brightness and contrast and we'll work with those a little more later. But if you'll notice when I move the contrast, you see how it's changing that photo? So I liked it the way the auto adjustment had it. So I'm gonna move it back to the center. And I can also move this slider and adjust the brightness. So that looks pretty good. Now, if I'm ready to print, all I have to do is print and it will send it to the printer and I can start printing. If at any time you wanna see what it sort of looks like, if you click up at the top on preview, you now have a preview of what it's gonna look like when it prints. So I'm gonna go back to edit. Now I can add text here. So under create, I have drawing and I can choose the color I want it to be. I can choose the thickness of my pen or the transparency of my pen. So if you're good at drawing, you can bring your pen in and you can either draw a picture or you could write your name or anything you want to draw on here. I'm not a very good drawer, so I'm going to undo that and I'm going to select text. Text will allow me to start typing directly on this screen. I can click font and there are 14 different fonts that I can choose. All you have to do is click on the font, go over to your photo and click, and then type your lettering. His name is Montana, so I typed Montana. I'm gonna click off of it to set it, and now I can click this any size I want. I can click on this and resize it unproportionally. I can go to color and choose the color I want this to print. I, I want to maybe put another name here so I can go back to the font. Choose the same font or choose a different font. Kind of fun to play with these. And click where I want to start. And he's my sewing buddy. Click off of it to set it. And now I can resize it. If I decided, oh, I don't really like that font, all I have to do is click on another font and it will change it for me. I can move and position it. I can go to color and choose the color I want it to print out. And I can customize any of my photos or anything that I want to bring into print. Now, if you don't like the 14 fonts or you want a different type of font that's not built into the computer, you can take your graphics into any graphics program such as Paint and there you can use all of the true type fonts that are built into your computer to do your wording with, save your photo, and then just import it back in as a photo with the lettering already on there. Alright, I'm ready to print. All I have to do is click print. The printer that we have that we've hooked up to is the Rico RI100 printer. This will always be in your printer selection. The print quality, I leave it at fine. You can change these options. And we're going to either save it or print it. Now, if you want to save this for future, click Save. Navigate to where you want to save this. I'm in my desktop in the folder that I have created for the design software. I'm going to go back into that folder so that I don't save it over something else. And I'm going to give it a file name. And this is going to be called Montana. And the software is going to save it as a DAT file. That is the only option. That is the file that the software is going to read when it's bringing something back in that you've already worked with. We're going to click Save. And now I can just go back to Print. 
click on print, it's going to send the data to the printer. When it's ready to print, the front of the printer, that button will have a blue light that starts to flashing, starts to flash, and then all you have to do is press that and it will be it will print your garment. Now, if we want to print one more or we want to go back to where we were, we just click on print one more and it takes us back. So we can print another one of these or we can change this graphic or work with something else in this graphic.